Do you want to buy a new NVIDIA graphics card and feel lost in a sea of numbers? RTX 5050, 60, 70, 80, 90? But what do all of these actually mean? Let's take a simple example. NVIDIA RTX 3050. RTX tells us the technology of the graphics card. In our case, RTX is NVIDIA's family of graphics cards equipped with ray tracing and tensor cores for AI, used for technologies such as DLSS. Before RTX, NVIDIA had the GTX series, which offered classic gaming performance but without ray tracing and without AI acceleration. 30 tells us the series or generation, more precisely the 3000 series. The generation indicates the design and architecture of the graphics card. In other words, what technologies and efficiency improvements it brings compared to previous generations. This is important information but secondary, because the real positioning of the card within the lineup is defined by the last two digits. 50 represents the performance tier, more specifically the number that defines the performance level of the graphics card within that particular generation. The 50 performance class is the entry point into PC gaming. It's the lowest performance tier in NVIDIA's consumer graphics card lineup. Over time, this tier has appeared in many forms, GTX 750, 950, then 1050, and so on. These cards are designed for users who want to play older or less demanding games without high graphical expectations. However, it's important to know that the 50 performance class is also where NVIDIA makes the most compromises in order to keep prices low. Typically, these cards come with less VRAM. We're talking about 4GB, 6GB, or in some cases 8GB, as well as narrower memory buses, which limits performance in newer games. The 60 performance class is the balance point in NVIDIA's lineup and the reason why these graphics cards are usually the most popular. Across generations, this class has been represented by models such as GTX 760, 960, 1060, followed by RTX 2060, 3060, 4060, and so on. Regardless of the generation, its role has remained the same, the best price-to-performance ratio. From a technical standpoint, 60-class cards typically come with more VRAM than the 50-class, which translates into enough memory bandwidth for 1080p gaming. That's why the 60-class is the first tier where you can play at 1080p with high or ultra settings without worries. The 70-performance class marks the transition from the mainstream segment into the enthusiast tier. Across generations, this level has been represented by models such as GTX 770, 970, 1070, followed by RTX 2070, 3070, 4070, and 5070. Regardless of the generation, the role of the 70 class has remained the same. High performance for users who want more than just good enough. You get more cores, wider memory buses, these differences translate directly into more stable frame rates and better performance at higher resolutions. For many users, the 70 class represents the sweet spot powerful enough for any modern game, without stepping into the extreme pricing territory of the 80 or 90 class. The 80 performance class is the point where we truly enter the high-end segment. Across generations, the 80 class has been represented by models such as GTX 780, 980, 1080, followed by RTX 2080, 3080, 4080, and 5080. Regardless of the generation, this tier has always been aimed at users who want maximum gaming performance. Even though today we see 16 gigabytes of VRAM or 256-bit memory buses on 70 or 70 Ti class cards, 80 class GPUs still deliver higher overall memory bandwidth, more raw power, and stronger sustained performance. This translates into true 4K gaming, with ultra settings and stable frame rates, even with ray tracing enabled. In addition, 80 class cards aren't valued only by gamers. Thanks to their raw power and high bandwidth, they are also extremely popular for video editing, 3D rendering, and other professional workloads. The 90 performance class represents the absolute peak of NVIDIA's lineup. This class was introduced relatively recently, starting with the RTX 3000 series, followed by RTX 4090 and 5090, which effectively took over the role previously held by the Titan series. From a technical standpoint, 90 class GPUs use the largest and most fully enabled versions of NVIDIA's chips. We're talking about massive amounts of VRAM, extremely wide memory buses, and enormous memory bandwidth, well beyond the needs of traditional gaming. In gaming, these cards can run virtually any title at high resolutions with maximum settings. However, their true purpose lies elsewhere. Professional workloads such as artificial intelligence, 3D rendering, and complex video editing. As a result, the difference between the 80 and 90 classes is far more relevant for professional workloads than it is for gaming. I hope this video helped you better understand NVIDIA's performance classes and who each one is designed for. 
from entry-level gaming to the high-end segment and professional workloads. I also recommend checking out our video on the evolution of NVIDIA RTX graphics cards, where we discuss how architecture, performance, and technologies have evolved over the generations. If you enjoyed this kind of video, make sure to subscribe to our channel, and if you give us a like and leave a comment, it really helps us out. Thank you.